From Richard D. Mullock. Hi, David. You appear to be one of the most senior journalists associated with Rebel News. That means you're saying I'm old. Well, I'm old. I'm always impressed by your gutsy reporting. My question, and maybe this should also be directed at Ezra, does Rebel News view the Zelensky regime in Ukraine as legitimate? And what's the view of Russia led by Putin in this war with Ukraine? It's my belief that Russia is the good guy in this conflict, and the sooner Zelensky and his rogue leadership are neutralized, the better for everyone. Ukraine is a holdout of the globalist elites, and Russia is the only force capable uh, that can neutralize it. Well, Richard, I'll, I'll tell you this much. Um, to call Zelensky a Boy Scout uh, is absolutely um, off the charts crazy. Uh, I don't think this is a matter of black and white. I think it's several shades of grain. Everyone, it seems, that's waving a Ukraine flag, they're depicting Ukraine as the victim. But the actions of Zelensky uh, would depict otherwise. And also, please visit our website to look at Jeremy Lafredo's reports that he filed from Russia. Uh, it's really something else, uh, what we've been led to believe, i.e. the sanctions. You would think that, you know, the grocery stores are empty. Uh, the precise opposite is true, is the case. Uh, they're filled. And uh, by the way, the prices are much better than what we're paying at North America. Uh, gee, if that's the result of sanctions, please, somebody sanction Canada. The sooner the better. From Rebecca Vershoor, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hi there, David. I am very encouraged by your investigations and love seeing how the evil population, the ones you expose, react to you. I remember when the Trudeau bodyguards roughed you up in the street. I was wondering if they were ever held accountable. Also glad to see you were healed and back to investigating the crooks. And um, yeah, I did get better. And I think what you're referring to, Rebecca, I know I did mention earlier, by the way, that we have civil litigation that is proceeding right now. But in addition to getting manhandled that day, what else happened is just a few days later, I tested positive for COVID-19. And I can tell you the past two years, uh, I had never been healthier, not a cold, not a sore throat, an earache, you name it. And then it was revealed after that incident and it received mainstream media attention in the Post, the CBC, that it turned out that half of Justin Trudeau's body card contingent were COVID positive. So I don't think I can prove it, but I have a very strong hunch, folks, that they did that to me. They made me sick. And in my case, I was on my back for almost six weeks. What a disgrace. <clears throat> All right. From Lisa, happy holidays, Mr. Menzies and crew. If you could please do a shout out to allcreaturesrescue.ca. Well, consider it done. They are an all volunteer rescue in Ontario and have worked extremely hard this year to help over 300 animals. My question is, what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you or Mr. Levent live on air that we may not have known about as it was happening? Or what is the most surprising thing you have experienced behind the scenes with David Suzuki or anyone else you have tried to interview? Thank you for all your hard work. Well, first of all, I'll tell you, Lisa, if you are part of an all-volunteer rescue crew in Ontario, you might want to look into our stories on Ezra the horse. That was the horse that was brutally, I guess, tortured is the word for it. It was dragged um, by a car and... There's still many questions as to what the fate of Ezra is, where it is, if it's healing, who the new owner is. Uh, you can go to past videos for that. Um, in terms of the most embarrassing thing on air, I think it might be something that never aired, but I would have no problem with it airing. It, it's, it's in the archives. Only a few people on the planet have, has seen it. About six years ago, I went to a cat show in Toronto and I was self-identifying as a cat. I was calling myself trans cat. I put myself in a cage and we put a, and I was put on display with the real cats. And uh, after a few minutes, all hell broke loose. Um, I think the costume is so ridiculous that my colleagues don't want to air it because they're embarrassed for me. But in 
certain respects, I think I was ahead of the curve, folks. You have people right now identifying as furries, including one teacher with the Toronto District School Board that goes to school dressed as some sort of animal. So, um, yeah, what do you think? Time to get that video out of the vault and broadcast it? I say yes. Hey folks, that was an excerpt from my show, Rebel Roundup. Now, to get the full meal deal, why not go to Rebel News Plus, sign up, and never miss a Rebel News Plus show in the future.